Hello, today is March 22nd, uh, 2020, uh, so year zero as far as I'm concerned. Uh, for a lot of reasons, the military is using that, um, have been for maybe, maybe over a year. Uh, I never really researched how long, it wasn't pertinent at the time, so it's lost now probably. In any event, uh, so this is a discussion on, whoops, whoops, whoops. Priorities, planning, and projections. And also note, Chugga Gangsta. That's how we spell it. That's how you track us. Underscore between the two words on Twitter. Today we're talking about, oops, 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 war resources and all kinds of stuff. All under the banner of priorities, planning, and projections. So that you guys get some idea of how this is going to unfold. The reason I'm able to do this for you is that I'm old. <laughs> I've seen shit, okay? I've, I saw the French uh, monetary conversion in the 60s when they went from the old franc to the new franc, and I saw the chaos. People died, and that was just finances. That was just the death of an old franc and the creation of a new one. And there were riots and shit. So, so I've seen shit, right? And uh, I'm not stupid, and I've educated myself over time, so I can make some projections that... In, in a broad sense, will probably play out and give you guys some idea of a framework for your thinking. The reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people are running into the cognitive dissonance shock now. So I see this uh, fellow doing a walk around in New York. He's an educated guy, very sophisticated, very successful. He's doing one of these little camera things showing you that nobody's out basically. You know, there's, there's actually people out there, uh, you know, for him, uh, 90, maybe 99% of the people were absent from his street, but for me it looks crowded because there's only a couple hundred people that live in my whole village area here. So, um, so I'm seeing him, he's discussing things, he's discussing a um, news conference he heard with somebody, I'm not sure who, some uh, officialdom guy who was saying that today was day six out of uh, 15 days of a lockdown and that will pretty much, uh, you know, deal with it. It's like, well, the naivete of these 30-year-olds, this guy's about in his mid-30s, I don't think he's anywhere close to 40. And I've uh, run into the same thing with my 32-year-old grandniece who is having a hard time conceptualizing what's going on, understanding the risk that she's uh, presenting to herself if she doesn't follow this, and she, she's having a hard time grasping that her world has changed. And it has. I'm here to tell you that your your planet changed when the Communist Party of China let loose, either by accident or deliberate, uh, this bioweapon uh, in late October. And from that point on, it was progressive, it was a disaster, it's still unfolding, but it changed the planet back then. And uh, we'll never recover. China's never coming back. So you see up over my shoulder here, it says no more CCP SOE. There will not be a recovery of Communist Party of China cent or state-owned or enterprises. These were the giant sweatshops that everybody died in, that kind of thing. This was the money fund and uh, funnel that kept the Communist Party in power in an otherwise uh, modernizing and economically growing China, where we should have had the base grow out from underneath the, the control of the Chinese Party just because the base became wealthy relative to the Chinese party, but the way the Chinese party did it with cooperation from the Bush family uh, out of the United States, you know, Papa Bush and Baby Bush, all of those guys, they set it up in the 70s with China. That all of this stuff would come through the Chinese Communist Party state-owned enterprises. And that was the big uh, outsourcing here where all of the jobs left the United States. This, this talk is primarily for the United States uh, people. Of course, it's applicable to Canada, Mexico, the Americas, it's applicable to uh, Latin America, South America to a certain extent. <coughs> They're somewhat insulated from some of these effects because a lot of them are economic and they hadn't caught up to a great degree with the, West, the rest of the West. Uh, this is applicable to the former um, European Union states uh, and uh, those kind of guys, not necessarily Russia so much. But in general, what's happening is the death of the, um, the a bioweapon was released it killed the largest, strongest, 
uh, most diverse manufacturing um, center on our planet uh, within about two months. That was China. It's all gone. Uh, people died, many, many more people than we're being told, perhaps millions more. If you look at phone records, there's all kinds of shit going on with phone records. I would discount it by half, but even if you cut it in half, then 8 million people have died since uh, uh, in this year, um, so since January of this year, likely due to the... Uh, that's if you cut it in half. Uh, if, it, uh, if you took just a 10% churn on the... Um, on the rates, then we're looking at uh, closer to 15 million. So, um, so it's horrific, and it's still ongoing. They're not recovering. Their manufacturing is is uh, spit at the moment, and we have a bunch of other troubles that will relate to the fact that China will never be the source of supply for Western world again. It's not coming back in three months. This this guy I was watching who was doing the walk through uh, New York said. Oh, well, you know, after the 15 days, the economy is going to come. They will turn it back on, and the economy is going to come roaring back. And again, the naivete is just shocking, um, because no, we don't have anything to come roaring back. We have no factories in this country. Uh, we don't produce textiles, for instance. So, you know, four months from now, if kids were to go to school, there's not going to be any new, new uh, school clothes for kids. Uh, because the pipeline will, our, our, our just-in-time supply chain will have been emptied by then, and we will not have new manufacturing coming in from China, ever. We may be able to reestablish relationships with uh, textile producers in Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but bear in mind they will have their own populations to um, support, and they may be dependent on China for critical parts for their machinery since most of the textile industry is uh, an outgrowth of Chinese um, industrial machine production. And so until they can start rebuilding their own machines, no more textiles, at least not in mass. And will we even have international shipping yet by fall or by the end of this year? So there's all these kind of projections that you can make that we have to consider. And so what I've done is to organize things as we'll go through here on the, the board to give you a framework for your thinking, and then I'll get off of the YouTube and you can go find something fun to watch. Um, but here we are. We're in war, okay? So, so we're in a war. Whether it becomes a shooting war with, with Communist Party of China, it won't be the Chinese people. Uh, many of them will die because of the CCP. Many of them will die from actions of the CCP, even if we don't go to war with the CCP in a physical shooting sense. Uh, but we're at war with a bioweapon that came out of their uh, labs. This war has instantly constrained global resources. Okay, because China, because there's no more Communist Party state-owned enterprises. Communist Party state-owned enterprises were the big engine that supplied all this stuff that went into the containers, that got put on boats, that went to every damn country on the planet that has fed the consumer society. So the consumer society is gone. We're now into sci-fi world. In sci-fi world, new rules apply, as I was harping on with my grandniece. Okay, the new rule is one mistake will be fatal to you or someone you love. If you get exposed, if you break a bone because you took a risk, if you... Um, uh, do something stupid and eat something on a dare or whatever, do any of these kind of things, there is no sophisticated medical system to recover you. You will die on sight, uh, wherever the hell you are. No one's going to come and get you. If it, if it was used to be in your county that maybe it took uh, 45 minutes, as it did here for me when I had my cancer surgery, it took me 45 minutes to get into the hospital, in an ambulance going like flat out, um, that's probably two and a half, three hours now. Once you go to a hospital, you then have to assume you're contaminated and no one you know can come visit you because they will become contaminated and they will take it back. So we have a new way of thinking. Our world changed. We have to adapt. We have to uh, improvise and overcome or die. One mistake can be fatal to yourself or someone you love. Think twice before doing anything and say, is this something a dumb person would do? If so, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. There's no recovery. So, here's what we're looking at. All kinds of things have changed. 
all kinds of non-obvious things have changed um, among the obvious, right? We probably will go into martial law. We'll have to, just to allocate our resources, just to understand that we're at war, just to understand that a lot of things are gone. So let's go look at the projections here, all right? So here's the thing. Our priorities are food, medicines, health care, first. Then we can plan to rebuild an econ uh, rebuild our economic system, rebuild a defense system against the bioweapon that we're at war with. Whether or not we are at war with the Communist Party of China, which let loose the bioweapon and poisoned all of humanity for who knows how many generations, whether we are personally at war with them no longer matters. They may not survive the bioweapon being unreleased in, released in China. Six months from now, if there's any Communist Party people left alive, then maybe we can kick their ass. But it may not be pertinent, right? So right at the moment, our, our, our goal is to get through this period of transition, focusing on our priority and the delivery of those and the rebuilding of our healthcare system, the rebuilding of our ability to create medicines, the rebuilding of our ability to provide foods, because there's a bunch of non-obvious things you, you, can't, uh, you can't think about. If you're a vegan or a, or a vegetarian, almond milk is gone. We will not be able to, uh, almonds take up, in California, they take up a huge chunk of resources in the production of agriculture. Vast quantities of bees, vast quantities of trucks hauling bees to get the, the bees to the almond orchards. It's not going to happen. We won't have, necessarily have the fuel. We won't necessarily have the personnel, the humans, to do all of this work. And then there's the uh, almond harvest, and then there's the production and the huge amounts of water required to make all that, uh, clean all the almonds, and then make all the almond milk. We can only afford that at a very sophisticated social level. That level of vegetarian protein that requires vast quantities of, of processing in order to make it palatable and digestible is shot. We're just not going to be able to devote the resources in a war to the production of a vegan diet and almonds. It is not going to happen, guys. So get your, your protein un, uh, groups understood and your, and your real health, um, uh, what they call it, real food pyramid, not the crap that the industry puts out with, with cereals and sugar and all of that stuff in there, right? You need protein. You need animal protein. You need fats, high-quality fats. You need no damn carbs because carbs promote illness. That's my preachiness, okay? But from now on, we're dealing with local pollinators in our agriculture system. We're dealing with vast quantities, amounts of, of water required. Anything that requires lots of water, lots of pumping, lots of maintenance of equipment, sterilization of water, and all of that kind of stuff for a commercial product that is not needed locally ain't going to happen. If, you, if you're used to buying something that came clear across the country to you for uh, food, probably is going to gradually or rapidly disappear. So we also got to have the same thing with chemicals. Monsanto and those guys are fucked. They're fucked. Okay, glycophate, glycosphate is gone. Manufactured in China primarily. The key ingredients to it. They, they require all kinds of specialized plumbing and, and crap to make this shit. So it's not going to be happening. So hooray! The evil Monsanto and the... And the the GMOs, all of that stuff is gone, all right? It's just bullshit, not going to happen because of the huge amount of infrastructure required to support that narrow little uh, slice of our, our lives, and it's, it's all fallen away. Uh, so all of these things are gone. International just-in-time just supply system, the outgrowth of one Peter Drucker's uh, thinking in the 1950s introduced to the Japanese and Americans and Canadian uh, manufacturers was brilliant at the time and has this incredible huge vulnerability which we're living in now the just-in-time supply system has died it will not be coming back so do not plan like this fellow I was watching on his New York walk that our economy is going to come roaring back do not plan that you're going to have goods the way you used to have goods for the next three years maybe we're in what's known as the discovery phase of the nat natural disaster. Only our natural disaster is going to extend out at least 18 years before we have a new normal, uh, and before you can have a developed normalcy bias. So we're in the first three years of the destruction of this normalcy bias. And it'll take a, a lot of people almost three years to grasp that. 
the older adults that um, that are super fixed in their ways, that are that are really um, actually probably pains in the ass to everybody, and very demanding, and so on. These guys are going to take a long time to come to grips with the fact that we're not, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore, right? We're not in that old world. We're in the new world. In the new world, we have priorities and other shit falls aside and there's no way we can make up for it anyway. So all of the, the fashion fashionistas, they're going to be the next wave of people that go uh, batshit crazy because there's not going to be anything for them to do because there's no such thing as stylist anymore. There's no such thing as fabrics, uh, arts, or any of that kind of stuff because we'll be reusing everything until it wears out. We're in a fucking depression right now instantly the way it took us years to get in the 1930s. Only we don't have the local infrastructure that supported us through the 1930s, which was the ability to make all of these products at least at a crude level here in the United States. Now we don't have the factories. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rebuild our uh, metals. We're going to have to rebuild our ability to do fabrics, our ability to do metals at all, which means steel, copper, uh, aluminum forging, fabrication, uh, machining, production. So we need, we need millions of working age adults to start understanding machine skills, how to run uh, all kinds of machining equipment, uh, CNC equipment, even more crude um, you know, uh, uh, shop tools where you do the metal lathing off of your own math. You don't have a computer crank it out for you. That kind of thing. That's what we're in this first three years. That's this discovery phase. And so for three years, we're going to be in this adjustment where we're trying to discover all of the priorities have changed, what we need to do for the planning to replace those priorities and uh, rebuild our place. And the projections that I'm putting in here are going to give some idea of a framework in which we will discover ourselves here in these next three years. So my, my guy in New York, he's going to be discovering himself in a whole new way because he um, doesn't have the sophisticated uh, life support systems that used to exist that created the uh, yuppiedom in you know, the millennial lifestyle. It just doesn't exist anymore, right? Uh, so your grandma's going to come on down and say, get the fuck out of the basement. You got to go out and, and plant a garden. We need food. And so we're going to have tons and tons and tons of people, the whole mass of the populace, slowly or perhaps rapidly shift into a new way of thinking about all kinds of things. And it will all come down to local. Local means we don't have exposures at this point during our transition. Bear in mind, we're still here in year zero. Okay, If we just divide this into thirds, our year zero began with the release of the... Um, the CCP bioweapon. And so we're in this period right here. So we don't know anything about our new world. We might as well have been space uh, invaders plopped down on a planet that was more or less okay for us and left to fend for ourselves because that's where we find ourselves now in this new sci-fi world. And so locally, you need to think about resources. There's a lot you can do. You can start planning now for your, your part in rebuilding the, the economy in looking at new ways to defend ourselves from this. I am convinced that there exists, likely in Africa or South America, a plant product in which there are compounds that will destroy um, this bioweapon in the environment. And someone will discover it at some point, and then off we go, we can just spray it, it's done, and then we can really start rebuilding, but we will never go back to trusting the Communist Party of China. We'll never go back to buying from their state-owned enterprises. They're shot. They're done. So don't plan on that. Plan on your own economy and your participation in rebuilding. We're at war. In World War II, uh, Roosevelt and the Roosevelt administration, when they were prosecuting World War II, they promoted individuals to head civilian efforts in the creation of production. That's what's undergoing, that's what's happening right now. So there's meetings, which is really stupid because you got these people sitting around a table and they're gonna make each other ill and they've gotta understand we've got to be remote like this until we get a handle on how to deal with this individually and collectively. Not so much for me do I, do I fear individually because I, I've got my body hardened quite specifically against this. 
but collectively, we need to do stuff so that we don't transmit it around. We can kill it. We can flatten the curve very deliberately, especially if we apply fire breaks in the process. The fire breaks being people like myself whose bodies are hardened with lots of vitamins and with antivirals. So we couldn't get it if we tried, basically, right? And so you get enough of us individuals, and we're fire breaks. We don't spread it out into any more clusters. Uh, even now, some of the doctors are tumbling to the effectiveness of vitamin C. Uh, it's taken them a long time, and they're bitching and moaning because they, they don't take the... Dead doctors don't supplement. Even live ones are just now starting to understand that they need to supplement to harden. So, you know, the allopath mindset is changing. So that's something that's been lost right now, is we'll never go back to medical schools the way we used to. Never go back to any schools the way we used to. Over the next year, or year and a half, or three years, we may not have any public facilities open because of fear that the public facility has been contaminated, and it takes almost a year to decontaminate for, for a virus, if you follow the manuals. And uh, new equipment these days, maybe that can be shortened, but in any event, it takes a long time. Then you have to get over the, the problems of the uh, uh, mental understanding, the fear-based, right? And so, so we're, we've altered our society. So the uh, social engineering of the um, Communist Party of America and the uh, academic uh, structures that produced um, the wave of... Uh, social justice warrior kind of crap, it's over, you know, because we'll never get together, we'll never have that group ethos again, we can't afford it, we're all kicked back to local, in local your priorities change radically, and everybody does different work because there is a new discovery that, you know, the local small collective is your, your immediate uh, life support system. So um, we're going to have military integration into society, we have to. Pretty soon it'll only be military trucks that'll be able to come on in and haul the dead away. Uh, a terrible thing. And then it'll only be some new form of disposal, because we don't have mobile crematoria the way that the Communist Party of China had. Were they planning for this? I don't know. Uh, so we'll have, we'll have military integration into society. That's going to change things. That should affect your planning. That should affect your ability to rebuild. You can actually get support from these people if you're in a position to where you can provide something that they need. You'll find that laws and shit are just swept out of the way to allow you to get this done because it now becomes a priority to secure foods, medicines, health care, and rebuild our economy and rebuild our defense. So, um, and your defense is only as good as your people, our machinery. So our, our submarines, our airplanes, our tanks, uh, you know, the Pentagon, all of these things are death traps now. That's just the way it is. You get one person infected there in a pressurized environment like a submarine and your whole crew's compromised in one day uh, because they've all become infected. And then three days later, they start showing symptoms on the early guys. 15 days later, you've only got maybe two or three people on the on the boat that are able to work at all to try and get your ass back uh, to some form of um, recovery and safety. All right? This is all leading to a rise of a new male ethos. So feminine, feminism is gone because that was supported by the social order. That was supported by the excess calories and the ability to have things like a court system. Our court system is shut down. And interesting for me, uh, is that things like HOAs are going to collapse because no one will bother, no one, no court system will support an HOA suit and waste time because juries can't be impaneled, judges don't want to hear this shit now, they've got their own crap, how can a judge work from home, how can you do any of this stuff in our court system without a physical presence to, and certification, can you even get a notary now to do anything, to even see you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the court system is shut down. The HOAs will collapse. That means where you live, if you had HOAs in the past that said, you know, you got to have your grass this high and all of that kind of shit, they're not going to do squat in, in the next three or four months as you go through summer and you put a goat on your yard and chickens in your backyard and a giant garden out front. They will not have the um, money, the time, or the infrastructure support to, to come on in and get on your case. They may be starting to whip out, you know, no, no notes and, um, and uh, fines and all of this kind of shit. And you can just tell them, see that big pole over there? Why don't you climb up to the top and sit on it and spin your way down? Because that's all you're going to get out of me. 
and there isn't anything they can do. What cop is going to come and arrest you for having a goat on your yard and uh, to produce milk and chickens in your backyard to produce um, eggs, etc., right? And a garden. Even if it's against the HOA rules, the world changed. If they don't recognize that, they will at some point when most of the people in that HOA uh, give them the big finger and say, you know, go and sit on this and spin. Uh, so, so those are gone. Um, also, tax sharing at a statewide level or at a national level within the U.S., state to state, is gone. Every, every local jurisdiction is going to keep as much money as they can because they're desperate for stuff. They're desperate for people that are uh, not going to be ill. This is, this is what I'm talking in this discovery period here. And they're desperate for resources that are going to be hard-pressed to be acquired because no more CCP SOE. State-owned enterprises are gone. So, you know, cheap iron craps, cheap steel crap from China is gone. Will not be coming back. And here's the other part of that. Even if China and the Communist Party resurrected today and they were saying, we can fill containers and ship anything you need tomorrow, and it'll take us five weeks to fill the containers and get the boats over to you, doesn't matter. Because the legal structure of being able to, to establish a contract with them is gone. It's gone, believe me. Internationally, I know this to be a fact now. That the, uh, it'll never happen because there won't be legal court systems, but there are so many lawsuits being uh, structured around um, contract failure not covered by force force majeure that uh, it basically would clog up our law system for a hundred plus years and no one would ever trust another contract with the CCP again so it, it's just not gonna happen they're just not coming back everything is against that restructuring of that old world we will not go back to that consumer society which brings us to our ultimate of all the projections here okay so with the international just-in-time supply system dead, then every country has to relocalize key industries. And that's where we're in here right now. Now, the smart countries right in here have people that are sitting down and planning. As I said, it's stupid, but you've got, you got industry leaders here in the U.S. You've got all these other people sitting around having meetings. Okay, what can we do? How do we do this? So I know there's, there's pulp mills here in, the, in Washington State uh, in the Pacific Northwest in general, that are now figuring out how do they convert cardboard production to toilet paper, right? We've got huge production capacity in the mills. A lot of them have, were starting to shut her down just because there was no demand. Now there's huge amounts of demand, but they have to retool, which means a horrific scramble to get the tooling going. Might take them three months. They may have to manufacture parts because they won't be able to get them from China, but they'll start coming on production as we go forward. So my projection is, let me get another color here. My projection is that we'll start seeing, so if this right now is March, then we can say that right here is our, our summer period, right? And we'll start seeing new production slowly, much anticipated, much hyped, government saying rah, 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 lots of words, but just a little tiny bit of output, start coming back in summer. And then it'll slowly start building over the next part of the year um, in through to January of next year. And so uh, then we might actually have a little bit of a sigh of relief as things start sort of seem to be recovering a little bit. Our issue is that we still have the remaining part of the three years and we're going to have shortages. <laughs> that will persist, the shortages are going to persist here for these three years. And we won't know, and, and there'll be happenstance, right? So maybe you get somebody that comes online and they start making uh, uh, sweatshirts here in the United States, and they do well, and then, you know, six months in, all of a sudden they dry up because a critical part of their machinery broke, and it's going to take them another six months to fabricate or uh, acquire one. And so we're going to go through that period. We're going to go through all of these ups and downs in here like you wouldn't believe as we go through this three years of discovery. But by the time we get to the third year, we will have a plan. So we'll have some consensus in the social order for a plan. And that plan 
will aim towards rebuilding. And then we'll have some realistic adult thinking. You'll get some people that will come on out there as things calm down a bit here, say, near the end of this year, and they'll say, okay, okay, citizens, uh, we can project that, you know, there's not going to be any new car project or new cars made in the United States for five years. But we can make a projection that five years from now, we can get uh, a, a new vehicle starting to be produced here in the U.S. And so then everybody will start freaking out. They'll run out. They'll buy tires. They'll get whatever the hell. But of course, we'll have discovered that we've got, you know, critical parts shortages. Critical parts shortages right in here before we hit summer. As I've discovered, you know, my batteries go dead on my truck. And so I've got to go get new batteries, that kind of thing, right? Or the batteries go dead on my tractor because of ill use, you know. And so I've got to get a desulfurator and, and recharge it and so on because there aren't batteries produced around here, right? And so there's critical part shortages. We'll keep discovering those over the course of these three years. And that'll, that'll account for the drops down the whole time. Uh, and then uh, across that discovery, finally we get into the uh, third year here and um, we've got a plan. And our plan is a consensus. Everybody feels good. There's been a lot of trouble over the three years. We've had a lot of um, uh, uh, pain, anger, death, denial, anxiety, uh, euphoria, crashing, all of this stuff. Okay, it's going to be a hellacious three damn years. And during this period of time, all you need to remember, the only model that makes sense is this too will pass. And I'll get through it. Uh, because we will, and, and we'll start from a new, new beginning in year zero, and we will create for ourselves a new social order. That's what we're in the process of, of doing, is discovering what that new social order has to get through in order to be created. And then, once the plan is implemented, at least in our, our collective social understanding, we'll head out here, and then 18 years from now, this will be our new normal and we'll be able to have a normalcy bias. It won't be like the normal that existed in the past. This is a new normal that we can't even imagine because we can't get there yet. In getting there, we're gonna discover a whole lot of, about ourselves and what we're capable of, and a whole lot of um, good things uh, about what, what we are building now, okay? So all of us now, there's this mindset. And I, this was the mindset I saw in that guy walking around. And the mindset in my uh, great, great grandniece. And the mindset is that the plan is to achieve a rebuilding of what was in the past. It'll take us a while to realize that we're never going to rebuild that. Especially the young people that only grew up in that. How can they imagine this? Their world is gone. I've lived in many different worlds, so it's... it's it wasn't quite that traumatic to me. I was really freaked out about all this, but the idea of the new world didn't particularly present any big intellectual hurdle to overcome. Now, bear in mind, this new world for me, especially over these next three years, and being way rural, I may have to, to actually go on out and depend on my skill as a hunter and a fisher uh, in order to provide uh, food, right? It, because we're not going to get food deliveries out here. Things are going to really break down a lot more than they have here. We have not even started the breakdown phase. I'm telling you all of this so that you guys can start developing your minds. Even while you're going through this shit, you can develop your minds and you'll be thinking about this part of it and going through this part of it and not, not getting too wrapped up in this part of it. Because it could be chaos, it could be crazy, but this too shall pass. And in the meantime, you need to focus on your future. And so... My future is that my retirement is gone. The Communist Party of China stole it from me. Uh, if I'm lucky, I'll manage to not end up in any hospital and be healthy enough to go on out and uh, do hunting and fishing. Not what I anticipated. I did not anticipate, after the cancer surgery and being my age and so on, a life of hardship and struggle from this point on, trying to provide for myself and others. But that's the way it is. This is the adjustment period, okay? So I can bitch and moan about it, but there's not shit I can do about it. Um, but this is where we're actually at at this stage, is that everybody's going to have to come to these understandings. And this um, framework, this little video here, will give you some idea of what our priorities are going to be, 
what you're going to have to encounter in dealing with those. And if you think about it, you can understand, oh, yeah, we won't have almond milk because almond milk requires vast quantities of water to be pumped and it requires uh, huge numbers of bees and people and all of this kind of stuff. So I'd better not think that there's ever going to be almond milk coming back to my local store here in Passaic, you know? Uh, that once it's gone, that's gone. Once it's out of the pipeline, it's gone. Um, it might take a year for that. There might be warehouses of almonds that they can still make almond milk for a year. But will they use the production this summer on that crop? I don't know. Uh, we're going to have all different kinds of variables that are going to be put in there because our agriculture is going to massively change and, um, and uh, as part of our uh, food surety and so on. We are actually really, really, really damn lucky here in the in, um, Northern Hemisphere, um, Europe and in uh, North America, because we are food producers and we can become ever so much more food producers if we're not lazy anymore. And if we're um, and we'll have to be because we won't have waste. So we'll have to guard our resources and reuse, 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 because we will not be able to replace not easily. And that's, um, that's where we're at now. So uh, I'm going to end the video here and let you know that I'm doing things like uh, I'm going to be ratcheting down on my online presence because there's not very much I can add to the conversation. I've given you what I can in the way of um, understanding about ways to harden your body. Now it's up for other people that are doing that successfully to spread the word. I'm not going to be able to backfill and add new stuff and that kind of thing. So you guys need to put it out there and make the rest of the people around you understand there is a way out at a personal level. And then everybody else needs to get their, everybody needs to get their shit together and start looking at foods, medicines, healthcare, our economy, the defense, and rebuilding all of the above. And if you can figure out a way to solve problems as a part of the rebuilding, the universe will reward you for this now and into the future. And so that's your goal, right? Huge opportunity. All of, all of you guys that were stuck in, in uh, dead-end jobs with great dreams, here is the time to turn your creativity and your, and your energy and your dreams into the um, uh, uh, saving and uh, supporting the social order. Make the new society what you want it to be. This is your opportunity. The universe came along and said, I'm clearing away the, through the destruction of the past. It is now up to you in the age of Aquarius to gather knowledge and build what you would desire to see. As Fuller says, Buckminster Fuller, you know, um, create the replacement that you want to see emerge. Paraphrased. Um, anyway, uh, so that's about it. So from now on, my activities are going to center about local. Uh, my activities are going to be doing things like sighting my bows so I can do hunting, uh, going on out and doing all of my, uh, getting my fishing skills back up, um, trying to get a small um, uh, situation set up to do serious fishing. Uh, you know, uh, fish is good around here. We got salmon, we got steelhead, high fat fish, uh, get you through the winter. Right? And that's something you have to think about. We may be forced to really be dealing with food storage and food distribution this coming winter. Uh, that's why local production uh, for food crops, in my opinion, I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time trying to grow salad things, right? I would grow dense foods like um, acorn squashes and potatoes and uh, turnips and root vegetables that have a uh, serious mass and uh, can get you through uh, hard times and store easily. Um, there's also the gathering. We, we need to do, you know, if it gets to that, I can do a whole lot of uh, uh, instructional videos on, on food gathering, but there's people out there. I don't need to, to duplicate the effort. Uh, so I'm going to slack off on a lot of stuff. I've got to concentrate local. The, the word is out. People are now starting to understand it's a, a bioweapon. I have pushed as hard as I can to get the uh, infrastructure, the officialdom to recognize this and use the appropriate words so that we can get real with the CCP and get real with our own citizens in rebuilding. If we use the bioweapon word, but we have an antidote, which is hardening your body, then people don't get freaked out and they understand, okay, this is war, uh, accidental war maybe, but war nonetheless. 
and we need to take a war footing, accommodate a war mentality, and uh, you know, basically shut the fuck up and do our part. So, um, like I was saying, and just on a personal note, I'll end here. It's just kind of funny. Uh, it's kind of funny that <laughs> I'm getting sued by butthead Corey Good with an outrageously poorly constructed document. I mean, I can't believe anybody would have the guts to try and get a judge to look at that. Not even to sign off on it and give it a docket number, but actually to read through it. Oh my God. Anyway, um, uh, and he chose this time. <laughs> so, the uh, universe provides and guides. With respect, guys, uh, you know, just some framework for you.